This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Friday, May 24, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. The head of the Barbados Pharmaceutical Society has come out strongly against health shops selling marijuana-based products. And President Paul Gibson is fully supporting the directive by Minister of Health, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, for businesses engaged in the practice to immediately stop. At the same time, he's applauding government's decision to loosen control on medical marijuana products by adding some of the prescriptions to the national drug formulary. That process is started when the minister turns the key and opens the gate. Um, the gate has not yet been opened, but he is priming everything, put, making sure that everything is in place so that um, it can be done properly. Um, I'm very conscious of the fact, however, I'm very concerned that at the moment there are many persons bringing um, CDB oils and cannabinoids and hemp and different things into the country. Um, and they may or may not know that at the moment it is illegal. You have a $250,000 fine if caught with hemp seeds, with hemp, and so on. So everybody needs to pull brakes up, stop, and follow the law. There's only one gate to come through, and that's the law. And I'm just, my only concern is that there needs to be more awareness. Um, Dr. Damien Kohal has done an extensive amount of work in this area, along with the Barbados Drug Service. And Dr. Kenneth Collin is working um, on, on um, through the University of West Indies as well. But the, Dr. Kohal and his team um, are really doing a very good job and trying to make sure that we are following everything didactically and making sure that the processes are followed. The Elliott Belgrave Primary School remains closed following protests over environmental conditions. Industrial cleaning is taking place today at the Boscobel St. Peter Institution, where there have been persistent complaints about a buildup of mold. Efforts were reportedly made to have the area cleaned on Monday, but teachers weren't satisfied. They reportedly stayed away from work on Wednesday and again refused to enter the building yesterday. Vice President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rich Mark Cave, spoke to Barbados today after visiting the facility. I am not an expert in the area. If the ministry, they will send in the relevant agencies, and if they are sending the agencies, if they are closed and sending the agencies to clean, then I will give them, allow the process to take place, and then we'll follow up after they have given the school back over. Okay, how, how long has this, this problem been persisting and what, what type of issues have teachers and students been faced with? Well, I can't tell you. The, it has been going on. We were here in 2017 or so where teachers did make some concerns. About it. I don't know the extent of the children's illnesses or the teachers' illnesses. But I can tell you that I know one, when I was told one is on sick leave and over the past Two days, there were a number of others who were homesick. As the Mia Motley-led government marks a year in office today, one group is saying the administration has performed reasonably well. The assessment comes from Anglican Bishop Reverend Michael Maxwell, as he noted measures taken by the government to lessen the impact of its belt tightening measures. At the same time, he tells Barbados today there's, been wo there's more work to be done. The performance of the government, I believe, of course, that it was a very difficult year for them, um, but I think that they have done reasonably well. Of course, they still have the challenges of the those who would have been laid off and those who are going through some very tough situations right now in their lives, and the church itself is, is seeking to do its best to try to, as best as possible with its limited resources, to try to lend some assistance to those who are especially adversely affected from within the particular parish to which they minister. Meantime, the bishop announced plans by the Anglican Church to introduce a pilot program to assist some of the country's most vulnerable. I don't like the word at risk, but that's the term that is being used, but I prefer to use the ones who are experiencing challenges in their lives right now, whether it be um, educational challenges, um, material challenges in terms of resources to be able to help them with their education. We are going into the schools and uh, the priests within the various parishes, looking for those schools within their catchment area, within their parish, they will talk to the principals and find out at least three young people and their families who will need that level of assistance. And then they will go in and they will assist as much as possible, as best as they can, to help both those within the primary school and maybe even within secondary school. 
The National Cultural Foundation is defending its decision to teach masquerading as part of its school and community junior costume program. Chief Cultural Officer Andrew Wells burst aside suggestions that some may view it as teaching children to engage in bacchanal. Instead, she says it's a powerful learning tool. There are some persons who I think erroneously believe that to do a costume design program is to teach children to love bacchanal. Um, bacchanal, I guess, wild dancing at music. Dance and performance is only one small part of the whole masquerade experience. And as a matter of fact, part of what the designer tutors will teach is that if a child is depicting Queen Nzinga, we don't expect that she'll be walking up like a Mother Sally <laughs> because the dance has to portray the theme. If a child is portraying a Mother Sally, certain movements would be expected. But if the story that's being told of a proud queen that led her, her, her countrymen to success in war, the child would be taught how would a queen carry herself. And by internalizing that, that's a teaching moment about pride and dignity and respect. The Barbados Defense Force will convene its second court martial on Monday. The accused, Lieutenant Coast Guard David Harewood, is charged with two counts of communicating with the enemy, one count of conduct to the prejudice of good order and military discipline, and one count of neglect to the prejudice of good order and military discipline. The court martial takes place at the BDF headquarters. There's regional and international news after this short break. A new opposition leader has been appointed in the Cayman Islands. Arden McLean took the oath of office yesterday and in weeks of speculation. He replaces Isaac Miller, who stepped down from the post earlier this month after citing lack of cohesion among the opposition members as the reason for his exit. Internationally, U.S. President Donald Trump yesterday announced a $16 billion aid package for American farmers aimed at softening the financial blow created by the ongoing trade war with China. The announcement comes as tensions continue to escalate between the two countries. Yesterday's aid package is a second bailout the Trump administration has issued in response to decreased agriculture trade with China. More from NBC. I was over on the farm of Jeff Papeover in Dyersburg, Iowa, back on Friday. He grows corn and soybeans. And I asked him the very question. Uh, after we met one year ago, he said that, that his operation wouldn't be able to afford a year with soybean prices $2 below the typical amount that they get in return. And all of a sudden, one year later, this was on Friday, I said, going forward, I said, is this sustainable, having an aid package carry you through? And he said, well, to be clear, this is the only way that we survive. The only way that we can keep this farming operation going is by getting this government aid package. Uh, at the same time, what you're looking at is, is essentially people like Jeff that are, 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 are facing the, the, the real issue that they were the ones who called on the president to take on China. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbedustoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.